Hey there viewers and welcome back to another Quick Tip Tuesday on a Thursday. Working on 07 Chevrolet, crank sensor is bad and the connector vehicle got towed in as an intermittent stall, no start, no engine light. However, there is a PO335 crank sensor code stored in it. Had the car running, got under, just touched that connector. The vehicle stalls, tachometer goes berserk and so on. Uh, needless to say, quick diag. Needs a new connector, needs a new crankshaft sensor. You'll find on these Chevrolets with the 4.3 liter and some of the other engines where the crank sensor goes in the front time and cover, the GM has a service bolt-in on it and wants you to shim the sensor to have the proper air gap. Now the paperwork that comes with the sensor says that it needs a minimum, uh, where is it here, minimum of 30 thousandths inch air gap. Uh, check it in several positions, blah, blah, blah. Add shims as necessary and it does come with two shims. If you don't do this, you could recreate a PO300 or a PO335, and I've seen these. Typically, the crank sensor will have a groove cut in it, and the old one, which I don't know what I did with it, but it did not, you know, did not indicate that, you know, the thrust bearings going out of the engine and the, the reluctor wheels actually starting to hit it. No indication of that. So I'm not too awful worried about it. However, I do want to check the air gap, and that is where the Quick Tip Tuesday comes in. How do you check the gap between this and the reluctor wheel? And the answer to that lies right here. And what I use is some of the stick'em stuff that goes on the wall. You know, like you want to stick a picture on the wall but don't want to poke a hole. So you can use Play-Doh, you can use clay, anything like that. Just take it, pile it up here on the end of the sensor. Make sure the sensor's dry, not oily. Take the O-ring off it so you can insert it easily. And I put a little pile on it right there. Now, the important thing is make sure that doesn't go in the timing cover on an open gap on the reluctor wheel. You have to make sure a flat spot of the reluctor wheel's up. We're gonna stick it in. I put a little dab of oil on the end of this so it doesn't stick to the reluctor wheel. We stick it in, we'll pull it out and measure. So I get a little dab of oil. I've already got the crank sensor out. I just put a little, little dab here to keep it from sticking. Now we'll take and put the crank sensor up here. Like I said, make sure there's a flat spot sticking down. Push it in all the way. You know, hold against the little fork there pull it out and we should have an indent of course you can't see it we should have a little indent from the uh, uh, reluctor wheel which we do and now we can measure that thickness I'll just do that with a standard mic I'm just gonna set it I'm gonna lock my mic at 30 thousandths because that's our minimum spec so you got the little protrusion out the end of it here and I'm just gonna stick it in the top of the clay now we'll see what we have so there's 30 thousandths and it did not make a mark in my clay. You can see uh, the little indent it made in the middle, but you can see of course where the uh, mic hit the outside edges. So what's that tell us? Well, that tells us our gap is less than 30 thousandths. Uh, technically, I mean, sometimes you can do it like this. You can just cut this loose. We can stick it in here. We can run it down, oops, run it down until it hits the clay. So we just just touch the clay just touched it right there and I thought we just touched it I guess we didn't I don't see any mark there go down just a little bit further it's kind of tricky to do there just put the dent in it right there and we're at what 20 21 thousandths roughly and it just put the little dent in the clay so I am gonna add a shim and then uh, well we could probably just measure these shims real quick you know we need roughly you know, ten thousandths or so. So we'll just see what these are. I don't know if they're different thicknesses. That one's twenty or nineteen. It's not rocket science. You don't have to have it dead on. You just need more than thirty. This one's nineteen. So the shims are both the same size. So technically, if we add one shim to this, we repile up our clay and take a measurement when we stick our mic on 30 and we stick it in the clay we should see an indent from our micrometer indicating that we are over the 30,000 spec so let me just go shove this in real quick there we are I'm gonna set this back up on 30 technically this should hit 29 5 there's 30 we're gonna lock it down we're at 30 and a half actually push it down and you can, oops, I wasn't holding it very level here. Let me go the other way with it. Try to hold it level. 
Yeah. And you can clearly see, hopefully, hopefully that focuses, you can see where the end of the mic hit, indicating that we are over 30 thousandths. So not a great tip, little tip, most people know it. Uh, I believe they actually have a special putty for this job, but in this case, this stuff worked. Now I gotta go put that back on the wall behind the poster Mrs. O had up there. I couldn't find my Play-Doh and uh, shove this thing in. That's it for our Quick Tip Tuesday. Hopefully that helps somebody out so you know if you need a shim to shim or not to shim. That is the question. And now you know how to do it. You know how to, you know, quick and dirty take a measurement. Is it close to the nearest hundred thousands? Probably not, but it will at least let you know if you're within their spec. You know, in this case, thirty thousands. At any rate, find us around, patron. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.